Hi everybody, this is Bonnie with Bonnie Bay Crochet and today I want to show you how to make my directionally challenged super scarf. As you can see, this features eight large granny squares which are crocheted using a special yarn that is color changing so you don't have to hide all those loose ends at the end of every round. It's crocheted in a style where the front side of the stitch faces continually and I'm also featuring the arrow stitch, hence the term directionally challenged. You can make this with the yarn that I recommend, or you can use yarn from your stash, whether it be um, you know, yarn that you want to change at the end of every round, you can certainly do that, or just even solid colored yarn. Whatever you have, I just recommend. You can even just, just go yarn shopping in your stash for this one. Okay, it does feature some fun tassels at the end so you can get as creative as you would like with that. go ahead and show you what I use for this scarf. For this project I'm going to be using two types of Noro brand yarn. Of course you may substitute whichever types of yarn that you prefer, but I am using Nishiki. This is a light worsted weight yarn and it is 77% cotton, 23% polyamide. Has a lovely color change that you'll be seeing in just a minute. I used two of these hanks for this project. I also complemented it with the Sonata, which is a blend of cotton, viscose, silk, and polyamide. This is a thinner yarn. This is a number two weight yarn. But if you wanted to substitute with a number four weight yarn, that would be fine. Just be careful about your gauge and make sure that the sizes of the swatches that you're making are adequate. And I only used one of these for this project. I'm also recommending that you have a size H or 8 or 5.00 millimeter crochet hook or whichever you prefer to satisfy the yarn that you're choosing. And as always, if you can have a pair of scissors and a yarn needle handy for hiding loose ends, there are not going to be as many as there would be with a traditional granny square project, but there are going to be a few, so make sure that you have one of those so that you make that job nice and fast and easy. To begin, we're going to chain four. And we're going to join with a slip knot to that first chain that we made. We make a little donut and we're going to chain three and we're going to work all of these stitches in this first round into the center of this little donut or, or what I like to call a cheerio. So we're going to double crochet, two double crochets, And just for the record, this chain three does count as a double crochet in this project, or at least in this square that we're making right now. Then we're gonna chain two, and then we're gonna work three more double crochets into the center. And I am trying to work this a little bit on the tight side. Okay, chain two. And then three more double crochets. One, two, and three. Chain two, and then three more. This is pretty much going to be uh, a similar, well, it's going to be the traditional granny square. 
although there are so many different ways to crochet these so I would definitely pay attention at least for a few rounds and then you're probably going to be good to go. So chain two and now I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three which again is acting as a um, double crochet in this project. Okay so now we're going to do something interesting and we're going to try to keep the front side facing all the way in all of these rounds and this is how we do that. We're going to slip stitch in each stitch until we get to the next chain two corner and we slip stitch into that chain two corner. And then once we do that we are going to chain three one two three and then now we're going to make corners in each of the chain two spaces and this is how you do this again the chain three counts as a stitch and then we're going to add two double crochets to that thereby making a three double crochet cluster chain two and then in that same space we're going to work three more double crochets Let me pause and show you what that looks like. Chain one and then we're going to do that again in this corner and in every corner around three double crochets. See this time we have to do three double crochets because we don't have that chain one standing in as a double crochet. So it's a multiple of three double crochets, chain two, and then three more double crochets one two and three chain one and then three more double crochets chain two and then that same chain two space we're going to work three more double crochets one two and three let me pause so you can see what we have so far chain one and then in the last corner we do that again three double crochets chain two and then three double crochets one two and three and you see the yarn color is starting to change a little bit here so this is what we have and then we're going to chain one and we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round which is the top of that chain three and again we're going to slip stitch slip stitch stick the hook in pull a loop through pull a loop through we're not wrapping the yarn pull it through pull it through all the way to that chain two corner and then we're going to do it again chain three now wherever you have the corners you're going to work what we worked here three double crochets chain two three double crochets but when we get to the spaces in between the corners we're going to just work three double crochets so let's go ahead and do that so we have the chain remember that counts as one double crochet so that's two and three chain two and then we're going to work three more one two three chain one and now working in between the clusters we're just going to work three double crochets one two and three chain one and we come to a corner again it's very important that you pay attention to where you are in this design because it's very easy to just put three stitches in the corner and keep going and then find out at the end of the round that something does not look quite right and have to rip some work out so just 
just pay attention to where you are in the design just visually and you should be fine chain two and since we're at that corner we're going to work three more double crochets into the corner chain one and three more double crochets that's in between the clusters chain one and again we get to the corner and you know what to do three double crochets chain two and then three more double crochets and again chain one and three in between the clusters now the only thing that's going to change is you add additional rounds is that you're going to have more clusters across so you'll be working three double crochets in each of the spaces between the clusters and it's only in the corners that you work the three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets and I must say while I know many of you may not be really big granny square fans and I totally understand that I have just loved working with this particular type of Noro yarn that does all the color changing for me so that I'm not going to have to hide a bunch of loose ends and I'll, you'll see once the project nears completion just how each square is going to look different from the other squares but yet complementary because they are you know basically the similar and same colors okay chain one so they're going to be similar but not exactly the same all right so join with a slip stitch to that first stitch pull it all the way through and then i'm going to slip stitch my way in each stitch to the corner slip stitch slip stitch and I'm going to do it all over again so I'm going to just do this corner with you once more double crochet double crochet because again I know I'm repeating myself the chain counts as a double crochet so that's one two three stitches chain two and then three more in that same space Okay, so let's let's just work one side and I'll show you what I mean. Chain one. So now in this round we're going to have one, two places where we work in between the clusters and when we do that we simply work three double crochets. Okay, chain one in between the clusters and then three more double crochets one two three and then we're going to chain one and then we're on to another corner so on and so forth so let's stop and take a look at what we have so this is let me show you how to count the rounds one two three and I'm on my fourth round right now so you're going to continue in this pattern stitch doing exactly what I showed you until you have a total of seven rounds so one two three four and then three more rounds so let me show you an example of a completed seven round square and you can see just how different that looks from this one and it's all coming off of the same yarn ball this there are no extra strands to hide of course there's going to be a couple there's going to be uh, the one here at the beginning and of course um, or actually at the end of that square and this one I can just go ahead and trim because I've already crocheted around them so I don't even have to worry about that one all right so this definitely minimizes the hiding of all those strands I think it brings in beautiful color in a creative way and then we're also going to work another section that's going to 
be complementary complementary to this design and we're going to bring in our arrows and let me show you how to create those. So you should have enough yarn to make eight of these squares. Now if you want to make your project larger, you can always add more yarn to this, um, but that's really up to you. So just make sure that if you're going to add squares more than what I'm including in my design that you have extra yarn so that you're able to complete your project. Now I want to show you the arrows that we're going to be making. And of course, depending on how you place them in your project will determine which direction that they point in. We're going to make several and look across the bottom of your screen and I'll tell you exactly how many we're going to make with the nine arrows and then we're going to make several with the seven arrows which is the one below here. Of course we're going to be starting with different stitch counts for each of these. So the, the uh, procedure for making them whether it's the large one, the longer one with nine arrows, or the one with seven arrows is pretty much exactly the same except, except for the starting stitch count that we're going to use on our chain. So I'm going to just show you how to do this with one particular stitch count, but you can just go ahead and make the others as well. So let me go ahead and start with the smaller one. Okay, this is the one with seven arrows. We're going to start with our slip knot and we're going to start with a starting chain of 31 stitches. Now the only difference between the shorter one starting with 31 stitches and the other one which has nine arrows is that the other starting chain will have 39 stitches. Okay, so just keep in mind how many of the short arrows swatches you're making and how many of the long. Okay, so for each of these, we're going to start in the second chain from the hook and we're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way across. For the short samples, you're going to have 30 stitches. For the long nine arrow sample, you'll have 30 eight stitches. I am not counting the chain one at the beginning of the of the row at all. Okay, so go ahead and work those single crochets all the way across. This is what you should have after completing the first row and if it's a little bit curly don't let that worry you because that's going to come out as we work additional rows. We're going to turn chain one and for this row it's an easy row just work one single crochet in each stitch across and we're going under both loops just to be clear or under the V. So go ahead and work that all the way across. Stitch count will remain the same throughout. So this is what we have after completing two rows. Now this is the row where we're going to work the arrow stitch and this is going to be arrow stitch row one. We're going to start with a chain two and this does not count as a stitch in this particular swatch and we're going to work a double crochet in that first stitch. Now working the arrow stitch we're going to prepare our hook for a treble crochet. Skip three stitches one two three and we're going to treble crochet in that next stitch. Now working behind the treble crochet, we're going to double crochet in each of these three stitches. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap our hook and we're going to pull that treble crochet down so that we can work in the stitches that we skipped. So we're going to work three double crochets, one in each of the next three stitches. And that's what we're going to repeat across the row. Skip the next three stitches, one, two, three, treble crochet in that next stitch. Working behind that treble, we're going to double crochet. I just want to show you that I'm working behind the stitch. Treble, um, double crochet in those three skipped stitches.
and we're going to do that one more time. We're going to do this all the way across the row until we have seven arrows, or half arrows as, as it were. Skip the next three stitches, treble crochet, in that next stitch. Working behind that stitch, we're going to double crochet. So treble crochet at first and then double crochet, which is the shorter stitch behind that treble. So this treble crochet, let me finish here, that treble crochet is going to give us a really nice surface texture to, to enjoy. And it's going to show us uh, the arrows and directions all the way around the scarf. Skip the next three stitches and treble in that next stitch. And again, working behind that treble double crochet in each of the next three stitches. So go ahead and work that all the way across or until you have seven arrows for the shorter swatches and if you're working the longer swatch you'll have a total of nine arrows begun. At the end of this row you should have one single crochet left. Just go ahead and work a double crochet in that last stitch. And again, this is what you should have if you're working this short swatches with 31 stitches or chains to begin. If you're working the longer, you'll have nine of these arrows begun. Now we're going to turn, chain two. Again, this does not count as a stitch in this particular project. Double crochet in that first double crochet. And now working in the arrows, prepare for a treble. Skip those three double crochets that you see and the next stitch is actually going to be working in the treble crochet from the last row. We're going to work a treble crochet there. And now working in front of that stitch where before we worked behind it, now we're going to work in front of this stitch. So this stitch, this stitch will be behind what we're going to do now. We're going to work a double crochet in each of those three stitches that we just skipped. This might be a little bit tricky. Make sure you just work in those top loops and that last stitch as well. Make sure you're just working in those top loops. And let's do that again. We're going to repeat that all the way across. Skip the next three stitches, treble crochet in the next, and you can check to be sure that yes, you were working in the treble crochet from the previous row and working in front, double crochet in each of those three skipped stitches. We do this one more time. Skip three stitches, treble crochet, and that next stitch working in front of that treble we're going to double crochet in each of the three skipped stitches. And let's let's pause. This is what it should look like from the back side. But when we flip it, you see these beautiful arrows on the other side. So go ahead and continue working that all the way across the row. At the end of this row, we work a double crochet in that last stitch. Let's take a look at what the back side should look like. And then when we turn around, we see seven beautiful arrows on the shorter swatches. Again, if you're working the longer swatches, you'll have nine arrows. Now for the last two rows, they are the same. We're simply going to chain one and we're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way across. And you will have 30 stitches. Again, the stitch count has not changed. 30 stitches in each of these rows for the short swatches and you'll have 38 stitches in each row for the long swatch. So I'm going to go ahead and finish both of these rows of single crochets and I'll show you how to fasten off. After crocheting that second row of single crochets, we're just going to 
do a chain and a tug. And we're going to clip a generous strand so that this will be easy to hide within our work. And this is what you should have after completing this. And again, seven arrows for the shorter pieces and you'll have nine arrows for the longer pieces. So go ahead and make the required number of the short and the long swatches with the arrows and then we will put this all together. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to join these pieces. This would be the seven arrow piece and the granny square. Um, but right now I'm gonna show you a simpler version which I think is going to maximize the use of this beautiful color changing yarn. I've gone ahead and made my slip knot and we are just going to simply use the slip stitch. So, and we're going to do this by putting our hook through starting with the chain two corner and the first stitch. And this is working along the foundation chain so you're going to have to be careful as we work this to work in each stitch across. So I'm going to bring this through, give it a chain, and I'm actually going to give it a little bit of a tug. The only thing about this stitch is you're going to have to be careful to keep even tension. There is a tendency to become very tight on this, so you want to not become too tight. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to stick our hook in to the first stitch and into the next stitch on that foundation chain and pull the loop through, pull the loop through and do it in the next stitch and in the next. Keep in mind that the front sides are facing upward, the back sides are facing as we do this. And we're just doing slip stitches. Go into the next stitch, slip, stitch. And then we're gonna go into the chain one space and into the next stitch, slip, stitch and then back into the the double crochets and you can see even with the differences in yarn size this still works so if you wanted to even pull some just you know scraps from your stash of even different sizes I would stay away from the extreme bulky I don't think that's going to work as well but if you have enough maybe it will um, but just to show you that you can combine even different sizes of yarn in this particular project and I think it will look very amazing and very unique depending on the colors that you choose. All right, let me just pause a minute and I'm going to show you how this join is going to look, which is kind of cool in that we're, we're not losing the color of this beautiful color changing yarn even in the seam. And we see this nice even seam here and I think this is going to to really look really look nice with this yarn. So go ahead and finish this all the way to the end and then I'll show you how to connect the next piece. After I come to that last stitch I join those in the chain two space. Just give it a chain and a tug and clip you know, a, a decent size thread so that it will be easy to hide using the yarn needle. And let's go ahead and take a look at this beautiful seam. And I will say what I like about the seam is it's colorful. You obviously see the seam, which traditionally would be on the wrong side, but I kind of like it because you see the colors and it has this beautiful raised texture. And I think that is just going to accentuate the beauty of the yarn that is used. Okay, so now we're going to join the next piece. And again, be mindful of the direction of the arrows. Of course, it really you can't really make a mistake here, even if you put the arrow in the wrong direction. But I'm going to try to have the arrows going up, and then I'm going to take a right turn just like this, which means sometimes you're going to be working in the foundation chain as you join these. Sometimes you're going to be working in the top stitch, depending on how this particular swatch is placed because you're going to go up and then over as you go you know, throughout this project. And so what we're simply going to do is, again, front sides are facing up and then we put the back sides facing together and we're going to join 
stitch by stitch. And let me just give you an idea of the counts from the chain two space all the way to this chain two space will be 29 stitches. And so you'll be working over 29 and then you will have uh, nine stitches in which to finish to this corner. And that way these will look nice and even. So by starting from the right and lining it up stitch by stitch, this swatch should match perfectly. And if ever it's off by a stitch or so, it's very easy just to go work in the next stitch. It's not a deal breaker in any way, shape or form. All right, so let me go ahead and start this one again by putting the hook in the chain two space and in that first stitch. And let me grab my yarn supply right over here. And we're ready to go. Make our slip knot. And again, make the chain one. Put a little bit tighter if you if you would like. And then we begin in the next stitch. with our slip stitch and we're just simply going to work that all the way across. So go ahead and finish putting these together and then I will show you how to work the border stitch. I wanted to share some additional pointers when you're um, slip stitching these together. In order to get the seam on the outside like this, make sure that as you're connecting these that you are working going into um, the granny square first so that you end up with that seam. Now if you don't want that seam to be showing then just disregard that and, and you're going to want to connect it on this side. But I kind of like the seam um, contrasting with the yarn so I'm going to do that. And also you may want to um, put or, or connect these along the sides of the square and then add them to the uh, in, in the order that you're connecting them. Let's say for example, you know, connect the seven seven arrow section along the side of the granny square and then you can join the nine arrow section on top of that. All right, so you may not go in exact order on all of these. In fact, you may want to just go ahead and attach the seven arrow side, um, you know, to the various sides first and then connect them with the longer nine arrow pieces in between. And again, following the diagram that I posted earlier. Now that I've finished connecting all of the pieces, I think this is going to be so much fun to wear. Now you do see a lot of strands. Yes, I do have a lot of strands to hide. It won't be as many as it would be if every single color in here represented a, a loose strand. But yeah, we're going to have several of those. So now we're ready to work the final perimeter round. And again, if you want to work additional rounds, you can. But I think this is going to be plenty. And it's going to give this scarf a unified appearance. Okay, so we're going to work that slip knot and then work a chain one. And I'm going to give that a little bit of a tug. And then we're just simply going to slip stitch in each double crochet as well as in each chain one space across. And let me go ahead and pull that up a minute and just like when we were working across the edges, we're going to work nine slip stitches evenly across on these other rectangular arrow um, patches through here. Okay, so we're just going to work that all the way around. When you get to the corner, let me see if I can find the corner. Here we go. When we, when we get to the corner, if you wanted to, to uh, do a chain one and then a single or a slip stitch in the same space again, you can. Um, or, or you can just simply slip stitch evenly around that corner. 
We are going to be adding fringe for those who want to add fringe to the corners. So it really doesn't matter a whole lot what you work in this particular space because of that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and work this all the way around the entire uh, length of the scarf. And I will show you the connecting stitch. After working this all the way around the entire perimeter, I'm just going to work another chain into the turning chain and then I'm going to join with the slip stitch to the first slip stitch just like that. I'm going to give it a chain and a tug and I'm going to clip another strand, a nice long strand so that it would be easier to hide. So now what I need to do is hide all of the loose strands. There aren't as many as there would be if we had worked each round individually, but I do have some of these green connecting strands, so I'm going to go ahead and hide all of these within the work behind on the back side of the scarf, and then we will add some optional fringe. Now to make the fringe, I'm just going to use a, a sturdy book that I have on hand, and I'm going to need a sharp pair of scissors and I'm going to take the remainder of the color changing yarn and I may actually put several threads of the other thinner yarn that we use to make the arrows but I just wanted to show you how we are going to do this. I should have mentioned that the the length of the book that I'm using is approximately 12 inches so that when you wrap the yarn around this you end up with 24 inch fringe which is what I'm recommending. Now if you want shorter fringe you can just use a smaller uh, surface with which to wrap the yarn around and uh, I just like to use larger rather than smaller that way if I want to trim the fringe back down I can always make it shorter but I can't always make it longer. Well I can never make it longer once it's been cut. Okay so what we're going to do is we're simply going to wrap the yarn around the book. Okay, just wrap. And I'm going to make five strands per tassel. And if you want to make more, you can, or fewer. That's an option too. So you can just wrap this many, many times. And then when you are done, then we just clip the yarn like so, and then you're going to have your yarn for your tassels. All right, so go ahead and make, um, cut the yarn that you need for these tassels, and then I'll show you how to attach them. Now let me show you all the strands that are ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select multiple different colors. I'm going to select five strands, and I'm going to try to really mix up the colors here so that they're not all the same when I go to attach the fringe. So I am selecting, and again, totally at random, um, selecting these colors. And it's fine if, if they are all the same color. It's really whatever you want. I just want it to be just kind of randomly, uh, you know, mixed with the colors. All right. So that's pretty close. And remember now we do have, you know, a little bit added in here so that if we need to trim this, we've got plenty of leeway with which to do that. So now I'm going to straighten these out. So now we're going to attach this to the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and start in this corner. And let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to we straighten this out and then we're going to put the ends together so that it's fairly even and my finger is at the halfway point. We're going to insert the hook from the back side to the front side and pull that down, yarn over all those strands over and then pull, pull this through gently and then give it a little bit of a tug until it's secured and that first group of strands or the tassel is now secure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 10 of these all along the bottom, one here in each of the openings, okay, here and here. I'm going to put one here. I'm going to put one here, which is about 
about in the space before where the arrow is at the center and one here in the corner. You may have to, you know, just insert the hook again from the back and then finish the tassel just the way I showed you. So go ahead and finish the fringe on both ends of the scarf. Well, I hope you enjoyed making the directionally challenged scarf with me today. If you did, I would love to hear from you. Please feel free to comment in the comment section below. God bless. Bye-bye.